Screen dump! So a bloke came over to England and said, I'll have all those places like Notting Hill and Hounslow and Dalston, the nice and the shit areas. In fact, I want all of England. And then eventually Willy Boy the Conqueror started giving out land to God and his mates down the pub and some of those descendants still have that land. Amazing, eh? Well, that's pretty much how it happened. And I'm wearing my traditional English skull vest, which they used to wear into battle to commemorate that event where they'd say, England. It can be really difficult just to get off the starting mark and have somewhere decent to live. A place to call your own, your own bit of land, sort of, with a mortgage. Now, if you're part of the William Conqueror history, then you're in a great situation. You'll have a fuckload of land and a massive cinema screen in your castle for you to watch this video. If not, it's hit and miss, especially if you live in a city sacrifice a lot of time to climb a career and eventually get a mortgage and a one bed shoebox or rent forever with annoying twats. I don't think any of us ever really question or think about who mostly owns the land over here. And I think it's quite funny in a sick way how an aristocracy who are just a legacy of people descended from conquerors and their associates of the past, they are all the ones who own most of the land in England and also a few companies. That's why we have to pay so much for property either in buying or renting in the larger capitals because someone else owns the land and it's very limited as to what's available. We have no control over that so if you want to live somewhere where you can go do salsa or speed dating or bothering or whatever bullshit you like to do then you've got to pay for it otherwise you might have to live in a shack near some pigs or people who do incest in the countryside so i'm going to talk about the land in england but not scotland because you know what they're like with their scottish patriotism and wearing kilts whenever they think it's acceptable and really painful bagpipe music uh, i'm not going to talk about wales because no one even wants to live there and Ireland is just basically Magaluf, but with more alcoholics and less sun. Uh, actually, the same amount of alcoholics in Magaluf holiday season. So I'm going to talk about the legacy of land in England, who owns what, and the future of land ownership. Although I'm not going to provide any actual constructive solutions, just uh, some facts and a bit of piss taking. Let's just go back to 1066 because a thousand years of condensed history up until now is enough for me to research. Even though loads of shit happened in the previous a thousand years of England, Romans and Celtics, Vikings, the loot, which is the instrument of a professional loser. 98,000 views, it's fucking ridiculous. I'm just gonna do videos about a loot from now on. Anyway, Battle of Hastings, 1066, William the Sharpbeard got his armies together and got over to England and just smashed everyone up. When William the Bastard took ownership of England, he didn't really know who was currently lording over which parts and he needed to get some filthy tax money in. The Domesday or Doomsday book was then written 20 years later in 1086-ish, which was a survey of England. And it had who had what in it so Willie could get those taxes, sort of like our HMRC tax report we have to do every year. Except this had stuff about who had pigs and how much they were worth and you know the land, who owned what. He really wanted to milk it. Although actually it didn't get fully compiled into one book because William died. So there's a small add on to it uh, in the same way The Hobbit is to Lord of the Rings. And the books are now in a museum probably with loads of Nick stuff from India and wherever. Right, then if we shoot forward to 1900, land for the common folk over this 900 years had reduced from 30% land, so land everyone could use for whatever, to now 3%. The aristocracy had taken fuckloads of land over a 900 year period. So then in the early 1900s, we had conversations about land reform and then council houses were built for the common folk. But then of course, we've got a couple of lovely wars coming. So the military took some land for training and weapons testing. World War II comes and goes, councils can now buy land cheaply and build council house estates so that people can do drug deals in the future. Now, toward the end of the 70s, a lot of the public land that was there got sold off privately. Land, land, get your land, loads of land, get two land for the price of one land. I've seen numbers like 400 billion worth of land being sold over the last 40 years. About 2 million hectares in size, so all of this has been sold privately. And to give you an idea, just over one hectare is the area inside a 400 meter track. So 2 million 400 meter athletics tracks have been sold off privately, which is why land is such a valuable resource because so much is privately owned. So 
We should know who owns what, shouldn't we? It's now well known half of England is owned by less than 1% of the population. And if you want to find out who owns what land in the UK, obviously it's a pain in the ass to go get that information. We know a lot of the land is generational and has been passed down for centuries. Also, a lot of land hasn't been registered because it's owned by the Crown or the aristocracy or Jesus. And that land has never been sold, so it's not registered because only when it's sold do you get the traceability. And also, who the fuck has the time to wander around England making inquiries? I'm interested, and so are you probably, but we're not going to start ringing the land registry and all that kind of shit. We've got other things to do. But I'll tell you who wouldn't rather do other things. Guy Shrub Soul, which is a really pain in the ass name to say. But old Shrubby Face has written a whole book about who owns England. A formidable, brave and important read, says Robert McFarlane. He also did this website, and as I read through it, I discovered there's no way I'm going through all of this shit, as interesting as it is, because I'm trying to rank up on Street Fighter V, and I'm finding it very hard, so I've got a lot on my plate right now. Luckily, I found some other more summarized sources of the top 50 landowners in the UK. As you might imagine, of these top landowners, nearly a third are royalty and nobility. And if we look at the overall groups in this top 1%, who own the majority of the UK land, in descending order from the top, we have charities and environmental interests, royalty, obviously, the military, foreign companies and foreign royalty and foreign business, utility companies, British entrepreneurs, educational people and religious nutters, and property developers making poor to mid-range quality flats. So how does that translate into actual land owned? Good question. Well, allow me to be a gossip merchant for a moment and skim through a few of them. The Forestry Commission and National Trust are right at the top with their two million acres, which is a good thing. It means everyone can have a little look and a walkabout. The Ministry of Defence has 750,000 acres. You might not like that because of war and, and no one likes war, but obviously we don't want to get blown up by loonies in North Korea or something. So you can't have it both ways. We have to lose some land to park tanks and for soldiers to get into pub fights. We've got the Crown Estate with 360,000 acres and various other royals with a load of land who were also descended from a strong line of incest. The organised paedophile club with their 105,000 acres. Companies like Saltair Water, which is a group of investors including HSBC and Citibank who own Yorkshire Water. Unlucky Northern Bastards, the Southern Puffs own your Mankey Water. Oh, look at this knob. Hugh Lowther, 8th Earl of Lonsdale with his 35,000 acres. Mr Hoover and Hand Dryer Face, 33,000 acres. He'll need a lot of Dysons to clean all that. Now this one's interesting. Roger Tempest has 25 acres and I doubt anyone's heard of him. I hadn't. But he's a perfect example of land handed down since the Norman Conquest. And I read this article about him and he actually sounds quite cool. I don't think he's one of those weirdo lords who just live in their castle and lock themselves away from the world with their money. He's gone and become a venture capitalist and given money to people to build businesses and all that stuff. Although he's a bit of a wanker for this guitar shot and he probably does do a few weird sexual things with pheasants or something like all these types do oh and there's mad lizzie in her mad hatter's hat on her 20,000 acres so you look through and you see the mixture of inherited land of bought land of inherited money that has bought land and you can see the average person will only really ever have a chance of having a fractional fraction of a part of england to carve out as their own so through luck or fortune or hard work, the minority truly does own the majority of land. Will it always be that way? The future of land ownership in the UK. I mean, you can't really predict this, can you? Challenging laws and ownership that have been around for centuries is always going to be like trying to build a YouTube channel with original creator-led content, which is clearly brilliant and deserves a lot more views than it's getting. History is history and our DNA drives us to try to progress in our lives, however we define that. Generally, this is an accumulation of assets and cash and passing on one's DNA. Although that last one's losing ground in the UK of late as birth rates are on the decline since 2012. But the point is, grabbing of land was in our genes from when we were hunter-gatherers. 
And William the Concubine was just part of that evolutionary path of us beating other animals into submission. It's what we've done and what we still do. The wars that have been fought for land around the world are continuous. Nothing has changed in that respect. Given the chance, as humans, we will take power and use it to benefit ourselves or how we think it benefits other people under our control. And ultimately, we always prioritise what's best for us and our families or people close to us everyone else comes second. And how that relates to land is if you receive some or you earn some or you are able to take some, you're never gonna give that up. That's why this land gets passed down for generations. And we have these laws and our laws are very intricate and sometimes very dated, but we generally abide by them because we know without those laws, we collapse into the chaos of the past. That's why land laws are there to give rights to people, to exemplify that there is some sort of permanence in our temporary lives. So it's kind of a cycle we can't break from. If we don't enforce laws of land ownership, then anyone can lose their land and there is no faith in a system. But if land is passed down for centuries, if you're outside those families, there will always be a time tiny limit of land your average person can have, which is exactly where we are. Right now, there's a game in life and a set of really hard rules that the majority of us never had a choice in making. There are talks of more allocation of land for farming by 2050, but as for giving land to people, it's not really something that's a high priority. It may be something that never happens in our lifetimes. So this is where we are now. We have to play this game and conquer the only way we can, basically through mortgages and if you ever have the money buying small islands that mean nothing to anyone until of course the matrix resets itself and we get a different system from a quantum computer because the new film's out soon uh, although it doesn't really look like it offers much more than the first one but perhaps it will temporarily allow us to forget that we won't be getting 140,000 acres from captain 10 billion Hugh Grosvenor the lucky bastard who was born the seventh Duke of Westminster. Crazy that, isn't it? How people are just born into these families and you know they don't have to do anything. But anyway, it doesn't matter. No need to be jealous. You've got a great YouTube channel here that you can subscribe to and tell all your mates about and uh, like the video, obviously, and leave a comment, whatever you want to do. And uh, I hope you manage to buy uh, a billion hectares.